Alright, welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. This video is really geared towards a lot of the um, the questions I get with personal students like at my actual studio, uh, my brick and mortar uh, studio where I sit with everyone and we go over uh, tablature. And so th this video is uh, a culmination of all the questions I get about how tablature works, how to incorporate it to your playing, is it right, is it wrong, all the fun stuff that goes with tabs. First and foremost, I'm going to tell you that reading tablature is not wrong, it is not bad, there is nothing negative about it. If anybody tells you that, they are absolutely wrong. Now, with that being said, um, there are many ways to communicate the notes on the instrument, and yes, do you need to know the names of the notes? Absolutely. Um, do you need to read music? You should. Uh, is tablature a great tool for guitar players learning how to play the instrument? Yes. Yes, it is. And the reason being is it gives you, with pinpoint accuracy, where to play these things. But there is a problem when reading tablature. First, it's a little disorienting for, disorienting for some people because the thick E is at the bottom of the tablature and the thin E is at top and it's like upside down to us and I totally get that. Um, and so, uh, what we're going to do here is show you how to incorporate it really well and get it stuck into your head to help you really conquer the instrument not just through tab but to really think about this guitar neck and again I will say this is just like how to start getting comfortable with the guitar neck you'll start to learn the notes all over the fretboard if you don't but the thing is is that tabs a great communication tool right now for you for anyone and I'm going to show you the hidden secrets within it and also help you better understand the neck of your guitar. Now what we're going to use to do this is we're going to use the pentatonic scale. And pardon me, I'll be right back in one second because my camera's a little out of focus and I want to adjust this. So stay right here and I'll come right back. All right, bye. Okay, so that should be a little bit better in seeing the strings on the neck. All right, so first thing I have to talk about is what is the most popular scale that riffs and um, and solos are built upon and that is without a doubt the form one pentatonic and it is this right here now I'm assuming assuming that most of you know this but just in case this is an A minor pentatonic in the shape of form one a link below will be one of my videos that has a free chart that is a uh, tells you all five positions of your pentatonic. But we're going to be using this one for now. Five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. And yes, this video is for guitar players right now, not for flute players. I'm sorry, Mike. All right, so here we go. So five, eight, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. A couple of quick things about this uh, shape. Number one, it's the most common shape there is for guitar solos. That's a fact. Go look up any ACDC, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, uh, Eric Clapton, Stevie Ray Vaughan, any classic rock era um, song, and you're going to see the shape in there if it's in A minor. Another fun fact is that the shape that has 5, 8, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 8, 5, 8 can only be an A minor pentatonic. Now, I'm talking about minor pentatonic. Some of you might have cringed right there and said, well, what about the relative major pentatonic? We're not going to discuss that one right now. This is about minor pentatonic soloing. Um, and so 5, 8, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 8, 5, 8 only belongs to the A minor pentatonic. And you're probably like, well, what does that mean? Well, uh, if you were to look at a tablature, and, and you saw the numbers 5, 8, and 7s, somewhere in it, like 5, 8, 7, 5, 8, 7, somewhere. You want to start realizing you're kind of like a wire guided missile, and you're circling in, and you're getting to your target. And if I look at a tab, and I see on there 5s, 7s, and 8s, the first thing my brain goes towards is that's going to be some sort of riff or some sort of solo or composition that is built around the A minor pentatonic form 1. When you're looking up guitar playing music or guitar music, this is the workhorse of it. So, if you go to a tab and you look up a section and it has, I'm not talking strings, just look at the, 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 uh, the tablature and you can see fives, sevens, and eights. The first thing you want to do is you want to think, man, that really smells like an A minor pentatonic. And, well, why would you want to do that? I'm going to show you. First, a form one pentatonic, when you're loading up to get ready to play, your hands in a resting position in the form one pentatonic should look something like this. Number one, blues finger. Okay, that finger wants to be barring the G, B, and E, not squeezing down, 
just there, okay? That blues finger video will be linked below. Your ring finger wants to be kind of on that root note. This is the root note here. Okay? And so you want to get like kind of comfortable with this position because most guitar players start off their, their thinking with grabbing the guitar in their form one pentatonic like this. Now, they might not come off the root note, but I'll tell you that when you have your first finger barred on that fifth fret area and you have your ring finger on the root note, you'll see the riffs get very comfortable because you don't have to move your fingers. You don't move your hands, sorry. Leonard Skinner, you're going to see this. So when you think of a form one pentatonic, you want to think of a couple things. Number one, your starting position, just when you go to learn a song, just to get your hands familiar with this, is you want to kind of look like this. Now, what if we were in a B minor? Well, it looked like this, right? What if we were in a C minor? Like this. When I'm grabbing the guitar to start playing, my first thing I'm going to do is come to this position right here, because I know that this position can pretty much conquer it all. So let me explain what's really happening here, and I want to show you all of this. That 5857575758 again is exclusive to an A minor pentatonic. And what you want to try doing is you want to try playing a form one pentatonic across the fret, starting on some common keys and saying to yourself the fret numbers, because those fret numbers appear in the music on tablature that we like. If I did this on the third fret, I know from the experience that I'm going to be expecting threes, sixes, and fives. Listen to the numbers of a, of a minor pentatonic when, uh, when I play it on G. Three, six, three, five, three, five, three, five, three, six, three, six. So if you heard the only three numbers out of my mouth were three, sixes, and fives. When you go to look up um, Texas Flood, that's when it's played in standard position, because he plays on the third fret. I know some tabs might have it on two, but you'll see some of them that have it on the third fret. You'll see a bunches of three, sixes, and fives, and you want to play this pentatonic three, six, uh, three, five, three, five, three, five, three, six, three, six, six, three, six, three, five, three, five, three, five, three, six, three, because the mathematics and the numbers behind the scale shape are going to appear on your tablatures. And when you see stuff in tablature and you're going, what the heck am I looking at? If your brain can group them into a scale shape, let it, it wants to, it's going to give you some comfort in finding what's happening. And again, when you look at Steve Ray Vaughan's Texas Flood, you're going to see fives and threes and threes and sixes, you're going to see some other fives, and you're going to see some other notes that aren't in the pentatonic, but this is the point of the video, is if I have a line that I'm looking at in tablature, and it's riddled with threes, sixes, and fives, and it has a four, it has a two, a random two, I'm still, I still know that, that it's going to frame out around that minor pentatonic, three, five, three, five, three, six, three, six. I can still understand that the majority of the work is me built around this pentatonic. I might have some passing notes, I might have some notes that are in full diatonic scales, but the point is that this guy is going to take the cake. Which brings me to another point. Now you're probably like, oh my god, there's so much going on in this video, but I really can't stress enough this, which is if you're playing something with a minor feel or a minor pentatonic, again, minor pentatonics don't have any modal responsibility, which means that they there there's two notes that we're not playing in that. And if they show up in your tablature, it's fine because a majority of that solo is going to be built around the minor pentatonic. So if I look up, and now here's a test, check this out. If I look up a tab and it says um, it has 10s and 12s and 10 and a 13 and 13 and 10 and a 12 and a 10, I know for a fact that's my D minor pentatonic because I've practiced studying the numbers. This is your machine and there's many ways to think about it and you want to be able to learn how to feel that form one pentatonic when it's necessary. If you look at the D minor pentatonic, 10, 13, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 13, 10, 13. Again, when you look at Layla guitar solo, you know, um, uh, for the unplugged, he's up here, I forgot the exact line. I know he starts down the 5, but he comes up to the 10. And when you look at the Layla guitar uh, solo unplugged, and I wish I remembered it right now, you'd see a bunch of 10s and 12s and 13s. And so the whole purpose of this, and we have more to do, is to realize that when you're looking up tablature, you're not looking up a random set of notes that occur in music. You're looking at, usually, if it's written by a guitar player, a group of notes that that form a shape, and when you can see it all, and, and if you look at that tablature and you see a bunch of numbers that you can kind of like oh man, that fits into that form one pentatonic, then you know where to grab the guitar and where to start looking. Now, I'll explain this as well. What happens when you come out of a form one? Well, the, the next 
best place that a lot of people write their solos is the form two pentatonic, but not the whole form two. So if I'm gonna go back to A minor for a second. You have the five eights, five sevens, five sevens, five sevens, five eights, and five eights. And the next form would be the form two, but what we see a lot in guitar solos is that they take it, I'm gonna eight, and we, I'm putting my ring finger on 10, and we have 10, eight, 10, eight, nine, excuse me. And what we have here, is the Form 2 pentatonic in A. So, if you look up um, the uh, Stairway to Heaven guitar solo, now, this is a good example because there's some notes in there that are not in the pentatonic, but when you look at it, it has the, it starts off with five sevens and eights, and your brain should say five, seven, and eight. Why do I know those numbers? Oh, that's the A minor pentatonic. Again, you're gonna see some notes in there that are in the pentatonic, and that's cool. We're talking about giving you a position to start in. And then you're gonna see it go up to eight and 10. Eight and 10, and eight and 10. Uh, I can't remember if there's a nine there, but it's up in this position, form two. And you wanna know, uh, from playing five eights, five sevens, five seven, five seven, five eight, five eight, okay, nine, eight, ten, eight, ten, ten. You want to know that that grouping is an A minor pentatonic because you're going to see it a lot. If you look up any ACDC guitar solo that has an A minor pentatonic, you're going to see the form one and the form two. You might see other form shapes, but you're learning how to be like a forensic detective, and when you see those notes scattered across the tablature, being able to kind of mentally put them all into one scale, and it's usually a form one, form two pentatonic. So now, let me do this in B, and I'll show you how I really think about it, so that when I look at tablature, when I see tablatures, it makes it easy, which is, it's gonna be seven, 10, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, 10, seven, 10. I know that's my B minor pentatonic, so if I look up a song like Red House by Jimi Hendrix, and I know it's played a half step down again, but you can play on the seventh fret, you're gonna see you're gonna see nines and sevens and tens and all these fun little um, uh, minor pentatonic moves. Now you're gonna see notes that are outside of it, but we're talking about the majority of the notes are gonna give you that scale shape to start with. I promise you. And so I have my form one, seven, ten, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, ten, seven, ten. And then I'm gonna to go to my form two, which is okay, ten, twelve, ten, twelve, and eleven. So I know twelve, ten, twelve, ten, eleven, ten, seven, ten, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, ten, seven. I know that that is my B minor pentatonic. And what I mean by this, I want you, I hope you're, you're watching up to this point, is you want to know, uh, without the shadow of a doubt, what the Form 1 and Form 2 pentatonics, their numbers are on uh, on the, uh, the frets so that when you look at a tab, for instance, if I did this in, let's say, C, okay, oh, I'm not going to play the guitar, I have 8, 11, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 11, 8, 11, and then Form 2 would be 11, 13, 11, 13, and 12, and so, and I know that because I played it so much. Excuse me. And so, if I did this in F, F minor, 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 4. Take it to the form 2, which is 4s and 6s, 4, 6, and 5. And so when I'm looking at a tablature and I start to see 1s and 4s and 3s and 4s and 6s and 5s, my brain's going, man, that really smells like an F minor pentatonic form 1 and form 2 blend, which where a lot of guitar solos are. All right, so now, hopefully I'm doing my job. What you want to do is you want to start on any Form 1 pentatonic and at least get to Form 1 and Form 2 and know the numbers. If I say to you 2, 5, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 5, a lot of you should be going, okay, that's an F sharp minor pentatonic and those numbers only belong to the F sharp minor pentatonic Form 1. And that brings me up to my last point, which I'm gonna make in one more second. But the Form 2 was, is gonna be 5, 7, 5, 7, and a 6 in there. And go look up Time by David Gilmour, right? Go look up by yeah, David Gilmour, Pink Floyd. If you go look up the Time guitar solo, you're going to see twos and fours and fives and and pretty much all here. You might see five and a seven up here. And you, and you want to say to yourself, okay, that really looks like a Form 1 pentatonic F sharp. It looks like a Form 2 pentatonic F sharp minor. And, I, and you want to kind of grab the guitar in this positioning. One fact I forgot to mention is when you go to the form two, grabbing it in this position, if I'm in F sharp minor, when I get to the form two, you're gonna see that middle finger go up to that, that note that's on the offset, like this. 
So when you're soloing, it's going to help you with your positioning. All right. So helping you with your positioning, helping you find a scale that your riffs come from, understanding that you do want to think of the fret numbers of this instrument because they're there. We have to, to explain, I can play on a piano and E exists on one place. Like this E is, is right there. But on the guitar, you have it here, 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 and here. And so, you know, to know, uh, to think of it as note names is fine, but this is an instrument that's built around numbers. A huge popular communication tool is built around numbers known as tablature. So if you can start seeing these famous scales in these groupings of numbers, it's very important. Now I'm going to finally get to my last point, which is, you have to understand this, a form 1 pentatonic and a form 2 pentatonic in any certain minor key, the numbers only exist in that certain key. What do I, what do I mean, excuse me, what do I mean by that? A form 1 pentatonic that has 5s, 8s, and 7s can only be an A minor pentatonic form 1, all right? You can have a different pentatonic, I'm going to explain this, that has an extra note. But that if you see that extra note, it means it's not a form 1. And so we have 5, 8, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 8, 5, 8. That means that that's an A minor pentatonic. If I have 9, 12, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 12, 9, 12, I know that's a C sharp minor pentatonic form 1. It can't be any else. It cannot. It's the way this guitar is designed. If I have it on 2, 2, 5, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, uh, 2, 5, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 5, that's only an F sharp minor pentatonic form 1. So now, the chart that I have below is discusses the, the E minor pentatonic, the A minor pentatonic, the G minor pentatonic, and the B minor pentatonic. And it gives you the fret numbers for the form 1 and the form 2, and also the Form 4 for each one, because the Form 4 pentatonic is a very, very popular tool for soloing because it feels like a Form 1, it really like plays like a Form 1, but it has a different shape, and all those guitar solos I mentioned, from Led Zeppelin to ACDC, Clapton, um, everybody, they usually play a Form 1 pentatonic, a Form 2 pentatonic, and they'll jump to the Form 4, just like my minor my minor cheat sheet jam guide, okay? I'm kind of pulling a lot of stitch method together here. So if you want to read tablatures comfortably, the best thing for you to do, form one and form two at least of every minor pentatonic and remember the numbers, know them very well. So that when you look up a tablature and you see 12, 15 and 12, 14, 12, 14, you're gonna say, oh, that's an E minor pentatonic. <laughs> When you see eight fives and sevens, man, that's no matter what string it, you don't even look at the strings. You see eight fives and sevens, like okay, that's probably be an A minor pentatonic. If I see ones and fours and threes, it's gonna be an F minor pentatonic. If I see elevens, eights, and tens, it's gonna be a C minor pentatonic. Now, this is a probability thing. Um, are you gonna find a tablature where it, this doesn't work? Absolutely, but this covers, I, I guarantee about 85 to 89 percent of what you're looking at, this mentality is going to help cover that, all right? There might be a line that isn't a Form 3 and you see numbers and you go, my God, this doesn't fit a Form 1, a Form 2, or a Form 4. What is this? Well, you can use your knowledge, if you, can, if you know a Form 3 pentatonic and you can feel it out, then you can kind of shape it back to the Form 2 and Form 1 and go, oh, okay, yeah, that is a Form 3. So, if you need to learn your pentatonic shapes, the video that I did is linked below. If you um, want to learn about blues finger to keep your first finger down on that Form 1, the video is linked below. The minor jam cheat sheet the video that I did will be linked below, showing you the Form 1 connection to the Form 4. But the most important thing that you need to do if you are struggling with tabs or if you want to make efficient tab reading happen in your mind and on your guitar playing is you don't want to look at the tablature and then hunt the hunt it down and be like, okay, six and then what? Okay, then four and then six. If I see sixes and fours and a seven, I know I'm in a G sharp minor pentatonic, which is rare. I'm trying to think of a song that has G sharp minor pentatonic. Anyway, the point is know the numbers of your pentatonics in your mind. Know them and know them well, so that when you look up a tab, you start to get a creeping suspicion, creeping suspicion, 
of where you can grab the guitar to start playing it like a guitar player and feeling it out. All right, hope this all made sense. There is a chart below. Um, again, it has the form one, it's tabs. It has the form one tabs for E, form two, and form four, A, G minor, and B minor, four very common keys, and some words of encouragement if you want to practice visually seeing those numbers on tabs. And then when I see you on Thursday on our live feed, you can ask me more questions about this. Um, if I missed something, sorry, I'm just kind of holding this here. If I missed anything, um, if you want any clarification, I will totally go over this for you. But this is where it starts. I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, the last thing, I know, you know, this video will be up forever, but I am having that Stitch Method uh, workshop in uh, Sarasota, Florida on um, December 14th and 15th, and we are, we, we're close to selling out, but I have to close the registration real soon um, because I have to start making the binders and calling everyone and video uh, conferencing everyone. So if you want to get in, information is available at stitchmethod.com, uh, but if you see this video five years from now, uh, ignore this because that workshop long gone. All right, take care. Hope it made sense. Bye.